You know, by the end of this build, there might not be much of the RC four-wheel drive C2X remaining. <laughs> Welcome back to the Scale Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. Today, we are starting a series that a lot of people have been asking me about ever since the RC four-wheel drive C2X came out. And that was to make this a more competition ready crawler. It has not been an entirely easy process. I've been noodling this for a while and I wanted to make sure I got things right before I put anything to film and put it out there for people to watch. There are some off the shelf components you will be able to use and as we get into later episodes there will be some fabricating and hopefully we'll even get into some uh, brazing and maybe I'll even show you a demo on how to braze uh, depending on how far we take this truck. So without much further ado, let's get right into it and I'll start talking about some of the things that I did and why I did them. Let's start with some cosmetic changes that actually do help aid in some performance first. Uh, the first thing I wanted to tackle was getting rid of that uh, bed on the back of the C2X. It was a lot of Delrin, it was very heavy, and because this truck is already quite high, uh, and center of gravity is only being affected in a negative way by having all that Delrin bed up high where it was. So I lost most of it. Uh, it's very simple to undo. Uh, there are a couple of screws holding it all together and I kept the platform in there for now because I do think I want to build up a little bit of a metal cage, some sort of brazing work, um, something to make it feel a bit more finished. Because as it stands right now, it doesn't look very finished. Uh, it's sort of just out there. It's not really a flatbed. I don't think you get flatbed points for that. So uh, let's get a tube back on there. You won't get Truggy points, of course, because the Truggy has to be tubed from uh, a certain point in the chassis backward. Uh, we're keeping the original chassis rails intact. So we are going to make some sort of tube bed on there, uh, but it'll just be sort of um, cosmetic, but it will also give you a couple scale points. One of the most striking changes I've made is wheels and tires. There's nothing wrong with those Mickey Thompson tires that were included, uh, but I have had a lot more competition performance out of the Proline Hyrax 1.9s. Uh, these are in the Predator compound. They are a great tire. If I'm not mistaken, I'm running Crawler Innovations foams in these tires, uh, probably with the medium outer. Uh, they are a two-stage foam and uh, they just work really well. Uh, you don't really have to do much tuning beyond putting them into the tire. Uh, this was a set of Method Roosts that I had. I'm using some locked up RC hardware. Uh, and there are also beef patties from beef tubes on there to give the truck some weight, uh, unsprung weight, of course, and it's nice to get a little bit of weight down low, especially on a competition-based, or if you wanna go competition-based, you wanna have a little bit of extra weight in the right places. Up front, that front bumper was uh, weird. It was weird. I know that they did it to aid in performance, and yes, I am definitely losing a little tiny bit of performance, but I'm gaining a lot better looks. Uh, and I think that the Vanquish VS410 Pro bumper is a really nice fit on the front of this truck. It looks fantastic. And I still have about 37 degrees of approach angle on the truck. So I haven't lost a ton of performance in that regard. Look at it, it's a kitty. <laughs> There is room to mount uh, something up there. They didn't intend it to be a winch mount up top, so uh, we're gonna have to figure out a different way of getting a winch installed. Ultimately, I think because this is a comp style truck, we're gonna wanna have a servo winch, uh, which we're gonna have to figure out someplace on this chassis to tuck it. We'll figure that out in a future episode. Moving down a little bit, uh, the RC four wheel drive tough armor sliders have been installed. These are uh, specific to the C2X and they do a great job of really tucking in nicely to the body contours. Uh, they run the whole length of the four door body too. So it is a pretty great looking slider. Uh, I am going to have to double check the rules uh, for Sorka to make sure they're Sorka compliant to get the full slider points, but I think they're pretty close, if not right on the money. That's really going to help aid in performance, and I love using a slider like this to pivot around an obstacle. That is an amazing way to save yourself a reverse or a winch. I'll be sure to put a link down below in the description to all the products I'm using on these upgrades for the C2X. You gotta know where to get them, and it's just easier if I put the links down there than you asking me in the comments. We're saving each other tons of time. 
Hey, uh, if you're enjoying this video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell so you get updates anytime there's a new video from the Scale Builders Guild. Now on to some of the more mechanical changes, and these are really important to help aid in the performance of the truck. As the truck came stock, it was very high. Its center of gravity was very high, and I don't find that that works really well in competition. Uh, there are a lot of opportunities for you to roll and uh, you don't want those reposition penalties because those are a killer. Ultimately, I wanted to lower the whole truck and the best way to do that is, of course, to get shorter shocks. But before I did that, I also added longer shock hoops on all four corners. That ultimately will bring the whole truck down because you're extending the shock out further instead of having it compressed all the way. So I used Galande 2 front and rear shock hoops. They are taller than the C2X shock hoops that come stock on the truck, thus putting the shocks at a much higher location, dropping the whole truck down. Not only did I use those shock hoops, I also repositioned where they sit on the truck. In the rear, it's really simple. They give you three sets of holes so you can actually change that shock hoops position. And because the G2 shock hoops are actually uh, not symmetrical and one end is longer, you can actually angle that shock inward so it does help to lower the truck even further. I did the same thing in the front. It did require me drilling some new holes, uh, but I did move the whole shock hoop back one whole length or one whole width of that shock hoop. So it's further back on the chassis and also angled quite aggressively. Uh, I find that a, lay, a more laid down shock helps in competition uh, and just keeps the truck a lot more planted. David Krieger of Bauhaus RC is responsible for the next modification I did. And this is just sort of a simple, uh, easy mod to make, but it's one that I think is really effective. Uh, I hate unscrewing those M3s to get the body off of this truck. And David came up with this really smart idea of just putting a few long grub screws into those body mount posts. So you just kind of friction fit the body over top, it clips into place and it won't come loose except in an extreme situation. This is a really great way to quickly get at things if you need to get at your truck really quickly, if you need to plug the battery in, this saves all kinds of time. And it's an easy mod, but it's a pretty great mod. So definitely make sure that's on your list of things to do. Now, clocking the motor. This was a really complicated change and one that I was dreading doing. It did require a lot of noodling and I didn't really get it as low as ultimately I wanted to, but I did get it a lot lower on the chassis thanks to this mod and it's really not that complicated. It does require redrilling of some holes and repositioning of some bits and pieces, but I will show you exactly how to do it. It's very simple. Your first step is to remove the spur gear. The best way to do that is to remove the stock motor from the motor mount, undo your M4 screw that's holding on the slipper clutch and pull your spur off. Uh, behind that whole spur and slipper clutch assembly, there are three screws holding the motor plate in place. You want to rotate that so the whole motor plate becomes essentially horizontal and in line with the chassis rails. I did shorten the standoffs between the motor plate and the motor mount to give myself a bit more wiggle room just in case this motor can wasn't as short as I was hoping it was going to be. Ultimately, you could probably get away with the stock standoffs, uh, but I just like having the motor in place where it is now. Plenty of room for the sensor wire. Uh, nothing's binding, nothing's getting in the way, and everything works really well. Clocking this motor plate, it won't allow for a full 540 can motor to sit in the spot without affecting where the servo sits. And I didn't really want to adjust that and make another set of changes, so I just went with the Homes Hobbies Polar Pro Stubby 3300 KV motor. I thought that was a good KV rating for 3S. I am running it on a smaller tooth spur because everything does get pretty tight in there and you don't have a lot of freedom of movement of that motor. So I went with the 56 tooth 32 pitch spur gear from RC four wheel drive designed for the R3 transmission. To go with that spur, I'm using a 12 tooth pinion. You'll probably notice that your top link is getting in the way of that motor and reducing the amount of clearance you have. So what I did was made a really janky 
bent up third link that I shifted to the other side of the chassis. Now, because I've bent it so oddly, it actually does a great job of clearing that whole transmission and doesn't create any binding when you cycle the suspension. I've cleaned up some of the wiring as well. And speaking of wiring, I've wired up that Puller Pro motor to the Castle Mamba Micro X. You're probably saying to yourself, you're crazy. That's not for a 10th scale or 9th scale crawler. Well, actually it is. It's going to work really well with rigs up to eight pounds. Depending on your box, it might not say that, but it is capable of running 3S uh, with a brushless motor, censored brushless motor. Uh, and it'll have no trouble at all running on a system just like this. I'm keen to actually get this system all set up and running, and in the next video we will definitely get this truck outside, weather permitting, and we'll see how it does now that I've made some of these major modifications. If you've got any questions about any of the things that I've done in this video, by all means, post down below. I love to read all of your comments and I try to answer as much of them as possible. If you've got a specific question or something that I haven't covered here or something you'd like to see me do in future episodes, be sure to post that as well. I think now that I've been able to clock that motor around, I think I've actually probably got enough room to install a servo winch on the actual chassis. That might be an interesting development and something that we'll see in a future episode. There's definitely going to be a lot more to come on the C2X comp conversion. Uh, I'm really kind of keen to do some more work on this truck and to see if we can't make it more competition ready. So there you have it. That's the first set of mods on the RC four wheel drive C2X. We're going to try to make this as competition ready as we possibly can. Thank you so much for watching. See you again soon.